Have you ever wondered how to craft a battle scene that not only thrills, but also carries deep emotional narrative weight? Well, today we're going to talk about battle scenes that captivate writing dynamic conflicts. That's right. But why is that important, Thomas? Well, let me tell you. You know, battle scenes enhance your storytelling by adding tension, drama, and pivotal character moments that can define your narrative, all right? Now, before we get into it, what is a battle scene? Because there are fight scenes, there are traditional talking dialogue scenes, there are also scenes that can just be, what the hell's going on? But a battle scene is today's focus, and a battle scene in a novel is basically a complex set piece very big, where uh, characters and forces engage in conflict. Hmm. This usually has a structural narrative arc that includes a beginning, a middle, and end that serves a specific purpose beyond hack, slash, and stab. There should be emotional depth and uh, drive. Now, before we get into the physical walkthrough where I do it in real time and we create a battle scene, right, a quick battle scene, I like to give tips. Those tips are something to think about well, we are going over the lesson. First and foremost, structure the scene. Okay, now, the short of it, break down the battle into a clear beginning, middle, and end. Start with setting the stakes and con uh, context, uh, and basically escalate. you want to escalate through the confrontation and resolve with significant consequences that affect the narrative. So even with a resolution, how does it affect the narrative, characters, motivations, emotions, etc. Now, the long of it is when you're thinking about the beginning, the middle, and then you want to start by establishing why the battle is occurring. It can't just be a battle for uh, we need action. You want to know what are the stakes involved for the protagonist, the antagonist, and the wider world at stake. This setup helps to anchor the reader's understanding and interest from the beginning. You want to explain the context, political, social, or personal, that has led to this particular conflict. This background provides a solid foundation for the actions that will follow. Now, once you have that established through the beginning of setting that up, right, the structure of the scene, you have to wonder about the conflict, the main confrontation. and the middle of this scene, the battle scene should be where the tension and action peak. This part of the battle will showcase the clash, displaying tactics, bravery, and betrayals, if uh, you know, you're into that. Eh? Now, it's important to maintain a balance between fast-paced action and moments of strategy or character reflection, which keep the reader engaged and provide a breather from the intensity. This is all about pacing, by the way. You know, ultimately... The fast paced stuff is great, especially when you're getting into it. But when you're in that, when you're in the the, the thick of it, uh, all character emotion would be slow pacing and not really exciting. All action and no internal thoughts or perspectives or positions uh, uh, from the characters would be too fast and uh, there's nothing to draw you in emotionally. And then, of course, if it's just about strategy and they're just talking about what they're going to do and how they're going to do it, you could basically lose it. So you need a mixture of all those. How you mix them, by the way, is a part of your writer's voice. Anyway, so the third and final thing with this particular tip is the resolution. You know, the end of the battle scene should not only resolve the immediate conflict, but also set up future narrative developments. Whether the result is a victory or a defeat, it should have lasting effects on the characters and the plot. This might include the loss of key characters, significant shifts in power dynamics, or emotional and physical fallout uh, that affects uh, basically future chapters. And that's important to remember. Everything that happens needs to everything that happens needs to influence the emotional truths and positions within the characters. Because even a, a, a battle scene can challenge a character's position. Uh, their position could be they don't feel they are a leader and it challenges them to become a leader. Right, their position is I'm not ready for this. This is not for me. what am I going to do? I'm no leader, and they are put into they're being challenged, and they ultimately find their way by being able to lead the situation and becoming uh they they lead it to victory, and that changes their position. 
It might be slightly, it might be completely. It might not be at all. They might be like, this was luck. They might not believe that they were able to lead through this. And maybe that continues with them. And now that changes the perspective of other people around because they're like, no, you are the leader. And he's like, no, there's no way. This was all luck. Like it was because of you guys. And they're like, no, you rallied us together. You, you made decisions and strategy right so that's always interesting too when they don't change their position they still believe something um so that would still affect the narrative moving forward all right uh tip number two character perspectives now the short of it utilize a multiple point of views to enhance the scope and depth of the scene this approach allows readers to experience the chaos and strategy of the battle from different angles deepening their immersion as readers now the long of it is you know when you incorporate various perspectives it allows the reader to see the battle from different vantage points which can enrich the narrative by adding layers of complexity for instance the leader of the army might focus on large-scale tactics while the foot soldier might be more concerned with survival and immediate threats uh additionally it helps with adding depth to the experience, you know, and each perspective should offer a very unique or specific emotional or strategic insight, uh, enhancing the reader's understanding of the battle and its significance. This approach will help or could help, depending, uh, to create a more immersive and multifaceted experience by showing not just the events, but also their imp impact on each character involved. Remember, impact characters. Even if you're not writing a character-driven narrative, characters bring weight and depth to it. What they're experiencing gives the real subtext to the reader of what's going on. Um, however, historically, if you're setting your narrative in World War II, if it's the Battle of Normandy, uh, there's a historical relevance to it, so you don't really have to overly explain that. But... Again, if you're just like, oh, the battle, yeah, where everybody went on the beach, and then you show Saving Private Ryan, and you see people in that situation and trying to get on the beach, you're like, oh, that's different. Saying there's a war and saying there's a breach and saying there's an attack is not the same as experiencing it through the characters themselves. Um, more importantly, though, I would like to also add that you don't always have to do multiple perspectives, okay? But... It does help. It does help expand the battle scene beyond the reach of a perspective. So again, a leader might be stuck in the tent or they might be around their generals or they might be over here dealing with something else. But then you want to see, well, how far does the battle go? How crazy is the front line versus how far, you know, like these are things that you could think of the POVs helping you with. Additionally, the way you could functionally uh, place it into the narrative is in a chapter, you could have one or three POV jumps to set up the beginning. And then chapter two is those three POVs setting up the middle and then a third chapter to set up uh, the end. Uh, another way you could do it is each chapter is a POV. So you can have the POV run through the whole beginning, then do another chapter and have that, right? Because it, it just... It's how you want to pace the story. It's how you want to influence your writer's voice. And it's the kind of narrative you're trying to tell. Uh, me saying you should have point of views is not me saying this is how it's done. This is just an option for you to utilize as a tool. I like using the POVs. But again, if it's just a single protagonist and it's in first person, uh, multiple per POVs might not necessarily be uh, your go-to. Emotional stakes, the short of it. Um, ensure ensure that the battle has emotional stakes each character should have personal motivations and fears that play out in the battle making the scene about more than just physical stabby stabby now the long of it is each character involved in the battle should have clear reasons for fighting or not fighting which could range from duty and honor to revenge or survival these motivations could be woven into the narrative to give depth to the action scene um you know uh during the battle uh the siege uh in game of thrones where king's landing is being attacked uh you know by uh the baratheons uh the baratheon army um and uh the hound is like i'm out <laughs> there's fire and he's like f the king f the city f this war and he just leaves 
that was for survival and fear. He has fear of fire. Plus, he's like, the king's not doing anything. And he's like, I'm done. I don't have time for this. The other thing about emotional stakes is the battle should challenge these emotions and fears, their positions, and also test characters' limits and force them to confront internal conflicts. This not only enhances the drama of the scene, but also drives character development, making the battle a crucial point of transformation or realization for many characters. Um, and there's different values to a battle. Like, the beginning of the battle could be a little, like, you know grander it could have a bigger scale to it they're fighting unknown so you know unnamed soldiers there's nobody involved but as the battle moves and moves and moves uh you know maybe it gets closer and closer with the camera and eventually they're fighting unnamed character that uh we were expecting the showdown to happen so you could think of that too but uh personally if they are unknown soldiers allow their emotion to still be presence on the page so it could either be through the characters that are working together you could show their camaraderie and uh, maybe it starts off where it looks like they're winning. And maybe, it, maybe it starts off where it looks like they're losing. You know, it's, your, it's your story, but allow emotional emotion to be somewhere. Okay. Uh, you don't want them to just kind of like shake off. Oh, we just killed 10 people. <laughs> we're, we're moving on. We're the heroes, you know, anyway, uh, number four outcome and conquest uh, consequences. You know, the short of it is the outcome of the battle should impact stories or more importantly, the story's direction. Uh, whether it's victory or loss, the results should push the narrative forward and affect character development. The long of it, you know, the outcome of the battle should pivot or propel the narrative forward. For example, a victory could open the path to a final confrontation with the antagonist, while a defeat might lead to a dark night of the soul moment for the protagonist. Just saying. You know, and ultimately the consequences of that battle should directly impact the character's growth and the narrative's movement. Survivors might emerge with a new res a resolve, a haunting memory, or injuries that change their role in the story. Jamie Lannister lost the hand. I'm just saying. Uh, spoiler alert. The resolution should lead to a reevaluation of goals and strategies, influencing how characters approach their objectives moving forward. All right. Before we jump into the uh, how do we do this, Thomas, uh, if you like, if you're enjoying this lesson and want more insight on fine tuning your writing skills, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. All right. Walk through. It's cat hair. Everyone. All right. What are the stakes? What are the stakes? Yeah. Boop. All right. What are the stakes? I don't know. You tell me. All right. So what are the stakes? This is something we need to figure out. We have to think about. We have to come up with. And it is a battle, so it's a big war. But let's say it's just territory. Let's say uh, the stakes are they are trying to hold a territory that will determine who has the advantage at the end of the battle. It's been held by the protagonist, protagonists of the conflict, but they were attacked uh, out of nowhere because of bad intel. That's not bad. Bad intel from their scouts. Why? Because their scouts were... Uh, Eh, we don't have to worry about that. I don't. It's gone too deep. Too deep. I'm not writing a story. Uh, it was a ta. It was held by the protagonist uh, of the kind of conflict first. But okay. Now, now we get to think about the beginning, the middle, and end. So beginning, middle, and oh wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> let's let's uh before we get into that. Let's uh, let's talk about this a little bit. So, what are the stakes? Because the next thing is the beginning, middle, and end. All right, what are uh, the stakes? Now, the purpose of this is we're establishing, you know, why are we here? Well, they're here because the protagonists are holding a uh, a territory that will basically determine who will have the advantage of the battle. So, this location is what really will lead whoever has it into victory. 
And that is why the antagonistic force uh, was making a last stitch effort to take over this area. And they did whatever they could to, uh, you know, make it uh, make it happen out of nowhere and take advantage of it. So they are the protagonists are not only being attacked uh, unprepared, you know, because they weren't in fighting position, uh, but that which which elevates the, the stakes, by the way, and the tension. Um, so they have to uh, fight back and push back. So now that we know that we understand that we have to set up the beginning which is established this scene establish you know obviously uh you know before we get here there might be chapters dedicated to uh this progression of the plot um but if we're just starting if we're just talking about this chapter the first chapter specifically the beginning um a pause so i like to do at least a minimum of three chapters uh for any given battle only because the battle should be big in scale. <clears throat> if it's a fight, that's different. A, a fight is it could be a chapter, it could be a half a chapter, it could be a, it could be the, the third of a chapter, whatever. But a battle, especially if it has consequence and it's been you've been working up to it, I like to do a minimum of three chapters: a chapter dedicated to the beginning, a uh, middle, and a chapter dedicated to the ending. Right now, additionally, you can add and subtract to that uh, in the sense of. It's your story. You can literally just make it one chapter long. I personally like to dedicate a chapter to setting it up. Um, additionally, I might add another chapter. So I might do two chapters for the beginning or two chapters for the middle, depending on it. Uh, in my current epic fantasy novel, I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And then I have a fourth chapter dedicated to basically um, a main conflict, a one-on-one. -on -one. And then I have... A follow-up chapter that is like basically the weaning down of the battle, not necessarily the end of it, but like the aftermath of it that is still kind of moving. And so my big battle in my epic fantasy is five chapters long, but they have very specific purposes. And uh, I personally don't think they drag on in the sense of they're not just going nowhere. Like the first chapter is dedicated to going what's going on. You know, this is the setup. This is the big battle. This is everybody's being established and then we raise the stakes in the second chapter and then we raise it even more in the third chapter and then that fourth chapter where it's a one-on-one -on -one is leading to the resolution but it, the stakes become personal and then that fifth chapter is is uh without giving anything away uh makes it an extremely personal uh element and then uh it, it, it ends in that chapter so you could do whatever you want but um in this example uh, when we're working it out, we have to at least, uh, in this example, in the first chapter, establish that the people are basically not ready and they are being attacked and we could jump into the attack, okay? But we also know, uh, we don't have to worry about how it ends, though, because but we do know that whoever wins, we have to inform the reader that whoever wins will have the advantage to win the entire war, okay? So, let's outline the beginning, middle, and end. All right, I had to take a sip of the soda. All right, so the beginning. We've already kind of talked about this, so we'll just lay it out. Uh, establish the group... Um, establish the protagonist and their army uh, around the campsite unaware of the coming attack. Okay? Okay. Alright. Uh, additionally, additionally, okay, oh wait, I'm gonna do this in my, I like to do beats, okay, so that's the first beat. The second beat is they are attacked and thrown into action uh, with the antagonists having the first initiative uh, ad advantage on them. Okay. And then number three, how I might, because remember, every chapter also needs a beginning, a middle, and end. So, um, uh oh also set up that set up 
the element of uh, the stakes, which is whoever wins this battle will have the overall ad advantage to win the war. Okay. And then the third thing is uh, they are attacked. Uh, I might want to go a little closer, so bring it closer to the main protagonist who uh, notices something that would potentially help them turn the tides to possibly win the battle. Okay? I don't know what this is right now because I'm just brainstorming. Oh, sorry about that. I'm just brainstorming. But ultimately, you know, if I was going to write it, this is a good starting point because... Again, this is just plot. Remember, all narratives are made of plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen. Story is how it unfolds through the characters emotionally, right? How it unfolds emotionally through the characters' personal experiences. All right. <laughs> Singing along. Sing with me. All right. You know, but one of the things could be uh, maybe uh, they see the main... Uh, main generals or a weakness in their approach, right? Uh, then I might write this. I might go think about this before. Think about this, all right? And that's just a personal note to myself. That's how I would do it. Like if I'm outlining, so you're seeing a, you're seeing inside the mind of a crazy person. All right. Now we got to figure out the middle. The middle is the battle is happening, right? But uh, so let's say uh, the protagonist takes action to uh, turn the tides, okay? But I also want to um, uh, I want to establish I want to establish uh, establish <sighs> establish that the protagonists army is losing the battle this will be the high point of the midpoint conflict of the battle scene okay not of the narrative of the battle scene because remember every chapter should have a beginning a middle and end but this battle scene has a beginning a middle and end and i Every middle has to have a midpoint conflict, uh, you know, like where the truth of the lie is revealed. The, and then it, basically the reversal, like what's going on, right? So uh, that would be the reversal. All right. Now we got to figure out what the ending is, okay? Oh, wait, wait. We got to add one more thing to the middle. Uh, the protagonist and a small group of people break through into... Uh, the opportunity to turn the tide. Now, again, I don't know what that is, but I know that the plot is, the plot is that that will happen. The story is how it will unfold through the character's emotional experience or the experiences emotionally. Uh, so that could be anything. I mean, uh, that's the fun part about writing, right? Anyway. All right. Now let's think about the ending. The ending. The ending is uh, the prota protagonist uh, breaks through. <laughs> oh, small group breakthrough. Oh, they already broke through. In the, okay. The protagonist uh, uh, works through the attack uh, and his, or their, their uh, right handed person because uh, we don't know if these are men women or whatever it could be anybody you, you know sometimes you want to leave yourself open you don't want to create the bias of well if it's a man then i have to you know you could just it's the creative brainstorming process it could be anybody all right it could be a frog yeah <laughs> it doesn't matter uh and they're right because it's creative writing they could all be these could be frog people anyway and their right-handed uh person uh is killed during the process so that's important in the beginning. Uh, the protagonist gets to the antagonist in charge. 
a charged charge, but this is not the main antagonist of the no narrative. Okay. Uh, and uh, the protagonist wins, but ultim ultimately does not kill the antagonist. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, this is going on. I need other stuff going. So while that battle is going on, uh, break back to the main fight. A main uh, large scale battle happening and show that the pro uh, the protagonist army is pushing back and taking over the advantage all right so you want I want to seed that in I want to want to seed that in seeding this in. I should say seed this in. Seed this in. And of course, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hate when that, let me get that out of there. All right. So let's just look at this real quick. Boop, boop, boop. All right. All right. So the beginning, we established the protagonist. Uh, remember, you always go back to your brainstorming, just kind of read through it. Maybe something will pop up in your head, whatever it is. Uh, established the protagonists and their army around the campsite, unaware of the coming attack. Uh, they are attacked and thrown into action with the antagonists having the first initiative advantage on them. Uh, what are we playing? Dungeon Dragon? Uh, also set up the element of the stakes, uh, which is whoever wins this battle will have the overall advantage to win the war. Bring it closer to the main protagonist who notices something that would potentially help them turn the tides to possibly win the battle. Uh, they see the main generals or a weakness in their approach. Think about this. And we're probably leaning more towards they see the generals. But anyway. Now, the middle of the battle is uh, the protagonist takes action to turn the tides. Uh, oh, so right away, I uh, I want to see this. Uh, While well, the battle is going on. Oh. Well, the, I should actually say this, well, the protagonist is taking action. Break back to the logic. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to put this up here as well. Because what I want to make sure I do is I want to keep eyes on the battle itself, maybe show smaller moments happening within the battle, right? Um, and then sort of have like uh, hard chapter breaks or, you, you know, uh, taking us back to the protagonist and, and them making choices. So I'll have two main POVs. The Maybe it's like one of the other people leading the battle, uh, leading people into uh, fighting back and they're handling the quote unquote large scale battle. And then have a POV of the main protagonist handling a small group of people. So anyway, with that said. I have to establish that the protagonist's army is losing the battle. This will be the highlight, the high point of the midpoint conflict, which means I could actually do this because this is basically what that is, but we'll have that right there, okay? And then the protagonist and, and a small group of people uh, break through into the opportunity to turn the tide. So that's how it would end. We'd show that the chapter ends with them breaking through, and now they're like, well, well I want to see what happens. And you're like, well, you got to keep reading. You got to keep reading. All right, now we get to the ending. Uh, just so this is clear on the screen, I'll bring it down like that. Okay. So the protagonist works through the attack, and their right-handed, uh, their right-hand person, their right-hand person. Uh, let's just say second in command, and best friend killed during the process uh the protagonist gets to the uh, antagonist in charge but this is not the main antagonist of the narrative it's just a general who has been built up through the novel narrative you know because we still have to have some sort of emotional value to them okay and then uh, hey 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 no no he doesn't get to be there but the protagonist gets Closer to the antagonist in charge. Okay. 
Uh, while the protagonist is taking action, break back to the main. Okay, so we know that. So now we have a kind of visual of the reality. And then you're saying, what is this, Thomas? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's the third thing that you should be paying attention to, which is weave in character motivations. Okay? So maybe this is a main protagonist. I, well, this would be the main, the only person that's involved. But uh, uh, I mean, even if I have the secondary, you know, I would. So what I would do is I would do this. Uh, secondary protagonist handling the large scale battle. All right, but we're only going to focus on the main protagonist. So, what are what are the motivations? Well, to maintain the advantage position uh, in this territory, uh, or else the side they are fighting on will lose the war. So that's one of the motivations. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, to maintain the advantageous, advantageous, advantageous. All right. Uh, so another thing you might want to add is uh, they recognize the general antagonist and have a beef with them. Meow, meow. Okay, it could be that. Uh, another thing is... Uh, do, 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 do. We've already established in earlier, in earlier chapters. I can't spell, but every great writer has a great editor. Okay, we've already established in early chapters that the protagonist just got a letter from their uh, lover slash partner. Uh, okay, and uh, are supposed to uh, receive them in the coming days. Why is that important? Well, we're going to establish a secondary element to that. Okay, the secondary element is if they lose this position, they, uh, the protagonist knows that there is a chance they and their army, their soldiers, will be ex execute. executed. And therefore, their partner is going to be walking into a trap which would see them executed. Do it. All right, so we have a couple things here. So the first one is, well, they're obviously fighting to keep the war, uh, keep their position, because that's their job is to, you know, make sure they win the war. Uh, this is optional. You know, this is, this, you know, maybe this is, hey, they have a beef with them. That, there's nothing wrong with that. But now there are two two motivations. And then we add the third one, which is really a very, this, this is probably the most personal uh, motivation so this is probably the wider, large-scale motivation, which is uh, there's still an emotional truth to it. However, this is probably more about uh, the main plot. This is probably like a secondary plot, but this is a personal motivation that will influence uh, the character itself. Anyway, and of course, you know, if we really wanted to do this one, uh, there is, uh, you know, stop the attack and hold everyone back uh, they are uh, want to lead their, uh, their army into victory right okay I could go deeper and deeper into that but anyway so there we go so so now we established those things and you're saying but Thomas uh, you know where's the example and uh, you know what? I don't know. Example battle scene for you and for me. You want to do it? Boom. Here you go. All right. 
Let's write a battle. Okay, okay. Let's go back up here. I like to take uh take my notes. Take my notes. Wee! All right. I took my notes. I took my notes. So how does Thomas do it? I'm about to show you. All right. So, you know, the chapter starts out. Uh, by the way, this would be like a zero draft, right? So I would, uh, I would go, uh, you know, uh, the pro protagonist mm, uh, walks around the campsite. Mm. Uh acknowledging some of the soldiers while heading to uh well heading to their uh main tent okay with their best friend at their side okay um okay let's see uh their army is relaxed uh, with some uh, out of their armor because it is late at night oh yeah all right the protagonist uh, makes it to their tent right so that's important and sits down at their uh, or no no uh, and uh, da, 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 uh, leans on their table with the maps on it. Okay. Um, there, uh, uh, they have a conversation about the next big battle coming up, which is not the battle that happens in this chapter. Okay. Or uh, uh, that happens uh, next. Okay, this is a, it is a separate battle that would uh, okay second se se because remember they don't know this battle's coming right separate separate se separate separate why is that not working oh there we go that's why all right do 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 remember every grid right now. okay um well talking over the battle plans okay uh the best friend mentions the letter and asks uh, the protagonist why they don't just Take some time off. Asks, why don't they just take some time off? They've been at war for three years. Right? Uh, okay. The pro protagonist says that they are coming to visit in the c next couple of days. Uh, before we head off to the next big battle. There you go. Uh, we could even say so. Like, <laughs> uh, 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 the protagonist believes they are safe in this area because of the advantage of the position. Uh, and only a an insane person would attack this location all right so now we're establishing like you know like what's going on the impossibility of it so this is uh so this is how i i would i would do it like this is me setting it up you know i'm working out the chapter specifics of the plot and while they're doing this uh you know so when i when i do this i'll I might, uh, or I should say, this is what I, I actually add the hard chapter breaks and the, um, boop, boop. 
I I like to add the hard chapter breaks. So that's the first scene. So the second scene, I have to do the other thing. I have to uh, I want to establish uh, the secondary people. So show the second in command. Uh, eating around a uh, campfire with some of their men okay and uh okay they're talking about who they miss back home so we're establishing that these are real people one of them says that they're excited to win the war the sooner they do the sooner they will be able to get back home to their newborn child, all right? A baby girl. Another one says, not me. I love the war. I love the fighting. Okay. Uh, I love the war. I love the fighting. Obviously, uh, you know, it's telling me this is incorrect, but dialogue is dialogue. You can't, uh, you can't uh, just that. Uh, and then finally, another one, another one go says, um, "Baby, damn, I mean, I do want to get home. My dog, my rot, my Rottweiler." Waller is waiting for me. Da, 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 da. Staying with my sister. My sister, but yet all I can think about is seeing that dog again. Had him since since he was a pup. Saved him from a pack of wolves. All right. Uh, he has okay. Adam again. It's a dialogue, so I I, I hate uh, the grammar when it does, like when it's just like the grammar. It's like leave it alone. Anyway, so there's a scene, right? But then what am I gonna do? The attack begins. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, but again, now I have to go back to the main protagonist. Okay. Runs out of the tent. Happening. Calls people to rise. And Get ready. All right. So that's important. What else do I got to set up? Uh, oh, so this this I kind of set up with uh, with this conversation over here, where like you'd have to be crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, I might even say uh, uh, mention that this is the location that will win us win us the war. And then explain why it is the location that will win us the war. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's see. Establish, protect. We did that already. We did that already. Uh, bring it close. All right. See the main general. Okay. All right. Have a uh, have the battle get a bit thicker. And show uh, the armies pushing back on the protagonist's army. Okay. Uh, by the end of the chapter, allow the protagonist to see what's. I uh, see. The, what is it? See the advantage, uh, the weakness. Uh, sees the main. I think I'm going to do the general. Okay. To 
recognize the main general of the antagonist's army. All right. Uh, they uh, make a plan and collect a few people to break free of the battle and sneak around to the flank, uh, to flank the antagonist. All right. Anyway, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but there you go. So, you know, I just mapped out the first chapter. Uh, if I brought it back, you might be able to see a little bit more. So there we go. Right? So that's what it looks like, you know, boom. And you're thinking, but Thomas, how many words is that? And I'll tell you right now. It's uh, 384 words, okay? And you're like, but that's not enough for a chapter. And I go, you'd be right. <laughs> but, you know, that's where, like, the first draft comes in. You know, now it's, you know, it's whatever, you know. Uh, Jacob, uh, you know. Walked along uh, the sweat smell of the gathering soldiers around him, the night lights, life of the tired, mumbled uh, around uh, um, across the campsite as he approached his tent, you know, whatever. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The sweet smell. No, the smell. The smell of sweat. Sweat coming from the gathering soldiers around him. Uh, the night, uh, the nightlife of the tired mumbled, mumbled across the tired, mumbled across the campsite as he approached his tent. Richard. Uh, Held close to his side, yawning. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's nearly midnight. Tired already? Okay, anyway. So, you know, you just write out this. You make the scene happen. You look at... Like, this would be what I would be writing out. I would, I would focus on this beat. And once I felt this beat... Uh, heading to their main tent with their best friend at their side. We know that they're approaching a tent, but they're not in the tent. So I would I would write this scene out. I would let this play out and be like, you know, and see how that goes for the first draft. And then once I was done with that, their army is relaxed with some... Oh, wait. Eh. Okay. So this would all be the first beat. And I would write that out. So if that ends up being 500 words or a thousand words, so be it. Um, and then I would work. I'd go. Oh, he, I have to write this moment out where they enter this. They enter the tent and they uh, lean on the table and there's maps. Uh, however, there's a discussion. So I might even do this. I might say the that's a third beat. So this is the second beat of the chapter, which is. They are talking about the next big battle coming up. And then what, what does that mean? Well, now I have to do the third beat. So now the energy and the movement of the narrative changes to this beat. So that's why I do uh, the pl do these uh, the bullet points. Is because it helps me pace out the story. I might even get more specific and more in-depth. I might be like, they have a conversation about uh, the big uh, bad battle coming out. You know, where is the battle? Why is this the next big battle, right? And these are like smaller thoughts and ideas that are important <clears throat> that I would want to get into that conversation. So this is the main beat, the main thing that has to happen. And then <clears throat> these are a little, this is like the, the smaller elements that are in that main beat. And then again, the specifics. So I could get as specific as I want when I'm doing my zero drafts, um, but I don't. I don't, you know, you don't have to. You could be very generalized and summarizing. Anyway, there you go. All right. Woo! That was pretty exciting, actually, wasn't it? Ooh. Okay. Uh, with that said, question. What's the most memorable battle scene you've read or written? And what did, what, why did it stand out to you? Again, 
What's the most memorable battle scene you've read or written, and why did it stand out to you? If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. Final thoughts. Remember, the battle scene is not just about the clash of forces. It's a pivotal narrative moment that should integrate seamlessly with the stories, themes, and characters' arcs. It's an opportunity to test your characters, develop their relationships, and push the narrative toward its climax or a significant turning point in your story. This is why you should approach each battle scene as a mini narrative within, within your larger story. Like any good story, it should have complexity and depth with its own beginning, middle, and end. This structure helps to keep the scene dynamic and engaging, ensuring that it contributes meaningfully to the overall plot. And therefore, the emotional stakes of the battle are what will linger with readers long after the details of the conflict fade. You want to focus on the emotional journey of your characters during the battle. How do they change? What do they learn? How does the battle affect their motivations and goals, even their positions? These are crucial questions that can make or break a battle scene uh, and allow it to resonate. On a deeper, more personal level. Uh, the Red Wedding, for example, or the Battle of the Bastards, or what have you, the, uh, the the battle against the White Walkers, if you like Game of Thrones. Right? Those are three examples. Always consider the aftermath of the battle in terms of both plot and character development. The consequences should feel real and have a lasting impact on the world you've created. This could mean dealing with loss, coping with trauma, or reassessing loyalties. Ensure that the outcomes of the battle influence the, uh, you know, the proceeding actions and decisions of your characters moving forward maintaining continuity and coherence in your story and allowing characters to live truthfully through those lived experiences you know if apple 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 cookable apple apple oh man apple this is what we call dyslexia it's the worst thing in the world applicable yeah there we go applicable uh if applicable uh utilizing multiple characters see i write it and then i'm like i can't say it. my brain doesn't see the letters correctly if applicable utilizing multiple character perspectives in a battle can greatly enhance the reader's immersion and understanding this technique allows you to paint a broader picture of the conflict while also deepening individual storylines each perspective should add a unique layer to the narrative, providing insights into the larger themes and personal struggles within the battle. Now, I encourage you as a writer to experiment with different uh, techniques and ideas uh, that help depict the battle scenes you want to write. And this might come by trying out various strategies uh, for increasing tension, deepening character development, and integrating thematic elements. With practice, as always, you'll find the techniques that best suit your storytelling style and enhance your narratives while increasing your writer's voice. Whew. Next video in the series, you know, outline a fight scene. Oh, outlining a fight scene. That's right. What's the difference between a battle scene and a fight scene? Battle scenes are broader and fight scenes are more intimate. So in a battle scene, you would do what we just did. In a fight scene, that would also have a beginning, middle, and end. <clears throat> Might be, for example, the protagonist in this battle scene heading to the general, the antagonist, and now they have a fight scene within the battle scene. So we're going to talk about uh, shrinking it down and, and, and uh, attacking it that way. Anyway, uh, you know, uh, as always, keep, uh, you know, you. Uh, I always say this and I, and, I, and, I, and I believe it. You know, there's peace and harmony. Okay, you want truth in your actions and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.